We love to hunt. No matter if it's waterfowl, big game, predators, we love to get after them. Sometimes we often forget why it is we love to hunt. Sure, we love the high fives, the sunrises, the camaraderie, the big smiles, the hot coffee. But when we sit down and think about it, the main reason we love to hunt is because we're conservationists. We get to protect animals such as wild turkeys, mule deer, white-tailed deer, and any other animal that we as hunters love to chase across the United States of America, Canada, Mexico, South America, and worldwide. At Banda Nation, we know one thing's for sure. If it wasn't for the hunter, there would be no conservation and there would be no groups of elk, groups of geese, groups of mallard ducks that we get to chase on a daily basis during our short seasons. So come along with us, get in the truck, and let's chase some coyotes as we protect the antelope of the high Nevada desert. tradition of ours, my brother Clay and Clint and myself, a bunch of our buddies, right around the end of August, first 10 days of September, you know, early fall, we head up to northern Nevada, pretty much in the same location that we buried our father a couple years ago, and we get after the coyotes. This year was going to be a little bit different. Steve Carmelo from the Syndicate and myself, we both drew antelope tags for this area, so we were going to get the double up. Scout for antelope in the morning and the evenings, call coyotes, you know, in the late mornings, middle of the day and it paid off. There's a ton of coyotes this year, a lot of, you know, a lot of water, and when there's a lot of water, that means a lot of rabbits, a lot of grasshoppers, a lot of food that these coyotes depend on for survival. We were on them, and I'm telling you what, guys, when you get an opportunity to kill two birds with one stone like this, we weren't gonna miss it. Yeah, you know, it's great, it's great to get out. Anytime you can get out early in the season, it's early August, it's hot, but you know, when, when, you, get, when you got a howl in your hands, uh, you know, it's, it's just a great feeling to be able to get out this early in the season and get after these dogs.
we're coming out of the summer, you're itching to get after the coyotes. And you expect those coyotes to be a little dumb, not being pressured over the summer. But usually the coyotes, they take time to come in. You have to be patient on a coyote stand, wait for them to come in. Sometimes they come in right away, but on this stand, me and Clint are just about to lose focus. But thank God our cameraman Matt was paying attention. Jackass. Donkey, donkey, donkey. I think he was trying to mimic me. Become a fan at facebook.com slash banded nation. I got a coyote on a string right here from just lip smacking. I'm not gonna change back to my call because when a coyote's this close, they're more apt to pick that call apart. So just keep to your lip smacks and don't change a thing. Again. Are you kidding me, Clay? You gotta be fucking kidding me. I dirt rolled him. Unbelievable. <laughs> How do I miss a shot at 100 yards? Were you nervous? I guess I was nervous. I'm the first guy out. <laughs> Yeah, I might have been a little nervous on the first coyote of the year, but for you baseball fans out there, it's better to go one for three than like Clint going 0 for two. At the end of the day, I got the job done. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> nice spot, Matty. Nice spot, Matty. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's 100 yards right here, and I can't hit him. I don't even know I've shaken so bad, and I dirt roll him at 300 yards running. <laughs> First one of the year done. That would have been a nice little shot at 100 yards. Nice. Oh, little. right. What did you shoot right, right between the ears? I, I guess. Were you head going for a headshot? A headshot. Why? Must have shot right Center over. Center punch him. Oh, right over the top of him. Trying to be fancy. Trying to be fancy. Safety. It's all right. We got one down. First of the year. Might not have been the best shooting, but. <laughs> He just kept coming. Oh, it was beautiful. Beautiful and, footage. No, what I think it was, if you see, I was right over the top of this yeah. camera and I was afraid of shooting it. I seriously, I was gonna mention that. Let him get past that camera because <laughs> I saw you were sitting right over the top of it. 
That would have been great. I'd take the I'm, eyepiece out at the same time. I don't know if I'm sweating more from the, the <laughs> heat or embarrassing myself. It's all good. We got him. <laughs> Follow us at twitter.com slash banded nation. You know, we're probably about 55 miles from Clinton Clay, and the last thing I said to him when our truck was pulling away on the gravel road was, guys, let's try to be spot on. Let's get this season started off with a bang. Please don't miss. How is it uh, zeroed in? First coyote comes in, 9,500 yards. Clay hits a little bit low. Clint misses, Clay misses, and then Clay makes an amazing shot, and that's what it's about. That's what I was talking about before. You have to do what it takes to be successful. You might have to make a running shot once in a while. Nobody in their right mind thinks that they're going to hit a coyote 100% of the time. So here's a perfect opportunity to talk about what you might do when you're sighting in your rifles in the off season. You know, we spend a lot of time boar sighting and get these, these rifles dialed in when, when, when the hunting season isn't there. And you know, a lot, a lot of guys will go out and uh, you know, shoot off of a bench, shoot on a real steady rest while they're boar sighting. What we recommend you do is go ahead and go out there with your bipod or your monopod, get into those different scenarios where you might be sitting, you might be kneeling, uh, you might be in a prone position. Practice maybe setting yourself up to the right and pretend that a dog might be coming in from your left and go ahead and switch, switch those positions to just get into those real, realistic situations so when it comes time to hunt, you've been practicing, you have yourself dialed in. It's a good suggestion to go ahead and get in those realistic situations so you're more accurate when the time comes to harvest that coyote. One thing I love about coyote hunting is the different calibers and the different uh, rifles that we get to utilize here at Dead Dog Walking and being teamed up with Howell and Hornady and we want to give a big thanks to Andy and Gene and Neil and the guys. We get to shoot a lot of different calibers, like I'm saying, from 204 to 22, 250 to 308 to 223 to 243, and every single one of these new super performance bullets are performing. And on this hunt right here, you know, Alex is equipped with a 223, and that's always been my least favorite caliber for chasing coyotes. I've always just thought of it as a weak, cheap, um, you know, caliber to go out and buy a bunch of bullets for target practice or groundhogs or whatever. But this new super performance stuff performs out of the barrel just like a 22, 250, and it is dead on, and these coyotes cannot stand it. Signs were showing late last night. And I should have known something was on the right. I woke up this morning. So we're up here in northern Nevada and uh, we just stopped for a little big morning coyote stand. There's a big open field right behind us. We're going to be covered up by these trees right here. So we're going to kind of sneak in here and get in the base of a tree. There ain't nothing you can do. You keep crying and praying too. For more inside scoop, go to bandednation.com. The toughest thing about predator hunting to me is is to be able to sit there and be patient and persistent. Every, you're not gonna call in coyotes every stand. You might, but you might not even see them because they are so smart that they come downwind out of sight to you and they'll, they'll run off before you even see them. So the number one thing that you have to do is sit there and be patient and, not, and don't get you know, mad or angry at yourself because you're not seeing coyotes every stand or calling them in every stand. You, they're, they're so smart and you're in their environment. They know, it's like someone coming to your house and making sounds and trying to trick you that a, a real dog's barking out back to you know come, come tell it to stop or something. So you're in their environment, you gotta trick them the best of your ability. You gotta sound so authentic, you, got, you gotta make them 
believe that something is out there dying. And to be able to trick such a smart animal, that's when it's such a huge payoff in your mind because you're able to go into their environment, do what you love to do, make the sounds as good as you can, and to be able to trick a coyote, it's the ultimate high. You know, we're lucky enough to see tons of pretty country around Nevada and tons of different beautiful coyote stands. And uh, on this trip, when we're out scouting for antelope, we happen to end up right above a little spot we call the honey hole. And uh, we get to this coyote stand and it's just beautiful. No reason not to call it. We know there's dogs in the area. So we're gonna take a little uh, break from scouting and try and call one in. So as pretty as this stand is, and being as close to our honey holes, it's got to produce something. And now knowing that coyotes can get a little bit lazy in the summertime, it's hot, they don't need to eat as much, four series of rabbits in distress and nothing comes, all of a sudden Clay switches the kai eye, and I'm thinking, good call Clay, this might stir something up. Number one for uh, season two of Dead Dog Walking. We uh, pulled into this nice little valley here and uh, a lot of rabbits. Got a good wet, uh, wet spring this year. Did about four series of rabbits in distress. Not, not, uh, nothing came in. Switched over to some kai eyes. Boom, right there. Came into what's that, 40 yards maybe? Little uh, 223 action. Yeah, this early in the season, you know, they they're just coming out, hunting again, getting on it up here in Nevada. So I like to uh, try, you know, just change up the sounds and stuff that you're doing. And right now the pups are still still a little young, but the moms they will if you go into that kai, you know, they'll they'll have still have that motherly instinct to go help a coyote out or you thinking it's their pup or anything or a pup might come in thinking that it's another one of their brothers or sisters and they're coming to help so it's a good deal to uh to switch it up to a coyote early in the season to get those motherly instincts you'll be able to pull in a little more a lot more dogs that way so we're going to find our dog be back with you here in a minute I'm being honest guys, there's a ton of reasons why we predator hunt. We love the anticipation, the build up, putting the call in our mouth, seeing that coyote or bobcat charge that call and come to that mojo decoy. 
But really the key ingredient, the main reason why we do it is because we love being conservationists. We know that our efforts up in the hills, such as this episode in Northern Nevada, serve a purpose. We're protecting those young antelope, those young mule deer, whatever other kind of animal populations are thriving up there. It can be said all across the country, whether you're talking about skunks, raccoons, possums, they mess with anything from a white-tailed deer to a turkey to a mallard duck to a pronghorn antelope. Me and my brothers get a chance to get up there, we're gonna keep doing it. The hills of Northern Nevada are like a second home to us. We know there's a ton of coyotes up there, and if we do our part each season just to keep them in check a little bit, then we know we're gonna have that much better of an antelope population. We got the food, we got tons of water this year, we just need to keep that wily coyote under control. We hope you enjoyed that, guys. We're gonna keep doing our part. Do your part as a predator hunter. Join us at bandednation.com or on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Chad Belding, your host. Thanks for being with us.